Hello, welcome to my new channel. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. Welcome to my new networking training series. My name is Trevor. I'm so excited that you're here today. Today's topic is static routing. So first off, let's define what a static route actually is. A static route is a network configuration that you as an administrator will add to a router or a firewall in order to manually update the device's routing table. Let's look at my topology for example. I have two routers here, router 1 and router 2. Each router is connected on a 172.16.0.0 slash 30 subnet with a backend network on each side of it. These dot ones are the configuration IP addresses that are on those interfaces for those devices. Now when you have a brand new router, when it comes right out of the box, the only networks that are identified in the routing table are the subnets that are directly connected to it. In router 1's scenario, its routing table is only going to have 192.168.100.0 slash 24 and it's only going to have 172.16.0.0 slash 30. So what would happen if a packet came in from this side of the router destined for this subnet? 192.168.0.0/24. Since this router is not directly connected to this subnet, it's going to drop that packet. So that's where static routing comes into play. We're going to use static routing in order to manipulate the routing table and tell the router how to handle packets that are destined to subnets that it's not directly connected to. There are two methods in which you can update a device's routing table. You can either use routing protocols or you can use static routing. The way that the router will look at those different routing entries and determine which one is more trusted, it, it's going to use the administrative distance. Connected routes are the most trusted because they have an administrative distance of zero. Static routing has an administrative distance of one. All those different routing protocols have different administrative distances. The lower the administrative distance, the more trusted that that device leaves in that route. So if you have contradicting route entries, but one has a lower administrative distance, the router is going to trust that lower administrative distance route. Next, let's look at the configuration that you're going to need to issue on the device in order to update that routing table using a static route. I've identified a breakdown of what that command is here at the top. The first command that you're going to need to issue from global configuration mode is IP route. Then this next portion is the destination subnet that you're trying to reach to. An example would be 192.168.0.0 and then you identify the net mask 255.255.255.0 and then this next portion is the directly connected IP address that you're going to forward that traffic to. An example of traffic coming in on this side of the router destined for this subnet will look like the following command and poof so this command will be added to router 1 in order for it to add a static routing entry for traffic destined for the 192.168.0.0 slash 24 subnet which is over here it is not directly connected so we needed to add that static route it's going to forward that traffic to 172.16.0.2 which is this guy right here. And here's the command that's going to be issued on router 2. IP route 192.168.100.0 slash 24 and forward traffic to 172.16.0.1. Router 2 by default only knows how to handle packets destined to its directly connected subnets. So we added that static route so that it can forward traffic out this IP address that are destined for this subnet. And honestly, it's that easy. So let's review. What is a static route? A static route is a configuration that is manually entered on a router or a firewall by a network administrator in order to manually update that device's routing table. A static route has an administrative distance of one. The only thing that is more trusted than a static route is a directly connected route. The syntax for a static route is IP route then you issue the destination subnet that your packets are going to, and then you issue the next hop that you're going to forward that traffic to. 
Thank you for watching this networking training video. Please leave any questions you have in the comment section below.